It's somewhat of a truism to say that we're awash in spatial data. I'm not so much talking about uh, shapefiles and geodatabases, but rather I'm talking about the embedded information that is created and stored and distributed when you're using Google Maps or when you uh, pull out your phone to uh, call Uber or a Lyft, or when you're uh, using your phone to check weather underground, to check uh, weather conditions and things like that, or even when you're sending a simple uh, text or SMS messages. All of this has a little bit of, of geospatial code attached to it. And uh, what happens to this geospatial information and where it goes has not been a concern of the geography curriculum, but I'm suggesting that it needs to be part and parcel of the geographic curriculum because we need educated people to understand how to, uh, how to handle this data, how to dispose of it, and how to adjudicate claims against the data. So over the past few years, I've become interested in this notion of spatial citizenship. And uh, spatial citizenship attaches a, an explicit uh, dimension of civics uh, associated with the uh, geospatial curriculum. And this is to uh, introduce some thinking, uh, meta-thinking about the uh, roles and responsibilities of a citizen to the state and uh, through the geographic lens. I am positing here that the OpenStreetMap community has been practicing bits and pieces of proto-spatial citizenship for a long time. And uh, I would like to discuss uh, how we implement this. I became uh, associated with, um, I became involved with the OpenStreetMap community about 10 plus years ago. Um, for those of you who don't know anything about uh, OpenStreetMap, um, OpenStreetMap compares favorably with Wikimedia, Wikipedia. We often uh, say that OpenStreetMap is the Wikipedia for maps. And uh, what I mean by that is that anyone can, uh, anyone can sign up for OpenStreetMap and become an editor, and you can uh, digitize your neighborhood and add things that are important to you uh, to the map. And you can add things at a hyper-local scale, or you can work at a global scale. You can work in someone else's neighborhood. Uh, we have, uh, that's five million users that we have. That's, uh, that's five billion nodes, that's five billion dots on the map, and an astonishing 500 million, uh, 500 million uh, ways on the map, lines on the map, and things like that. And, uh, the interesting thing about this is that uh, all of this is volunteer contributed. Um, this uh, represents a, a, a huge amount of volunteer hours over the years that have been contributing to OpenStreetMap. So soon after I began, uh, soon after I began um, working on OpenStreetMap, I began to understand two things. First of all, it's the, uh, it's the outsized role that the community plays in uh, governing the OpenStreetMap project. There is a, uh, you know, we often take things to the community to vet decisions or to make uh, tagging decisions or attributes or things like this. And uh, so the other thing that I've noticed is that um, OpenStreetMap had a lot of potential for things that I was interested in. Urban planning, hiking, cycling, recording my tracks and things like that, but it also held a great deal of, of hope for education as a tool for that. So um, I want to um, talk a little bit about how we have been, uh, how we've been implementing these things. So uh, over the past, uh, since about uh, 2014, I uh, conspired with some like-minded colleagues of mine to uh, begin ex uh, exploring the role of OpenStreetMap and how we might use it in education. And um, we began by, uh, hosting some mapathons where people get together collectively on a Saturday morning and, and map their neighborhoods or will filter out into neighborhoods and gather data and enter it into OpenStreetMap. We began offering workshops where we were talking about finer points of mapping and getting into more, in, in think, uh, more involved mapping techniques. And then we, be, uh, then we be, began uh, constructing a curriculum and lesson modules and things like this. 
And so we began to understand a few things about, uh, about this process. Um, first of all, there is um, the students that we have, uh, and, and the, the people that we have trained, not just all uh, high school and, and college students, but a wide variety of student uh, people that we have trained, they understand already this uh, notion of uh, geometry and attributes, which is good, that's part and parcel of GIS, but they also understand by mapping together in a group, they understand the social construction of geospatial data and how that happens. Another thing is that um, a lot of our students uh, become involved with uh, humanitarian mapping. There are several organizations that uh, dedicate their resources to mapping for the least amongst us. And uh, the humanitarian street map team uh, often will, a lot of our students will map for humanitarian uh, open street map teams. So for example, uh, when a typhoon hits the Philippines, uh, Typhoon Haiyan hits the Philippines, the humanitarian open street map team will mobilize on behalf, uh, to mobilize mappers on behalf of this to digitize the areas that are affected. Um, a lot of our students, by doing this, they implicitly understand uh, interdependencies of geographical regions. They also understand scale. So we've been able to, uh, so we've been able to introduce uh, those sorts of uh, geographical thinking through the OpenStreetMap, through the act of mapping itself. We often counsel, and this is a, this is peculiar, uh, mostly to uh, working with uh, younger students, is that. Um, We've noticed that people have a tendency to overshare on social media, and OpenStreetMap is no exception for that. Uh, frequently, when I'm working with younger users, uh, we have to instruct them not to. A, a lot of things, a lot of students want, the first thing they want to do when they get on OpenStreetMap is digitize their house. The second thing they want to do is digitize their friend's house and label it as a brothel. And, uh, we have, to, we have to caution students that, first of all, OpenStreetMap, when you put something on OpenStreetMap, it's live, right? It goes right out there. And uh, the other thing is, we don't want to dox our, our friends. We don't want to, uh, we don't want to uh, divulge more information on OpenStreetMap than we uh, necessarily have to. Um, we have two obstacles with this. Um, first of all, OpenStreetMap has some great tools, but they're not necessarily set up for teachers to use. And that can be an obstacle. The second obstacle is that we find that um, uh, many teachers who are teaching AP Human Geography have not really had much uh, geographical training. Perhaps uh, they had a course in World Geography in their education school, but um, few education curriculum, uh, few educational uh, schools have an embedded you know, GIS function or, or train their uh, future teachers in GIS technologies and open mapping and things like this. So that uh, tends to be an obstacle. So um, what, would, uh, what is the future of uh, spatial citizenship look like with OpenStreetMap and how do we, how do we um, how does, how does that look like in the wild? Uh, first of all, there's an example from uh, George Washington University where I teach. Um, students there have uh, organized, uh, self-organized. Uh, students have self-organized themselves into uh, this humanitarian mapping society. The students there have determined that uh, what they're doing and the techniques that they're using are valuable enough to volunteer their time in order to map for uh, Typhoon Ayan or the, the, the cyclone that's hit Mozambique or uh, landslides and volcanoes in Indonesia. So these students are mobilized to map on, on, on behalf of those things. Um, the second example uh, is a community group from Washington, D.C. called Mapping D.C. And I'm a, uh, an erstwhile organizer and part-time participant in, in that group. And uh, a few years ago, we had a loose coalition with the uh, city of Washington, D.C. Uh, they had a program, or they have a program called D.C. Great Streets. And uh, we developed a, a collaboration with them to uh, map different Great Streets corridors. And we would go and record all the businesses on there and, and update OpenStreetMap accordingly. 
And we'd also take pictures of the uh, storefronts along with it while we were in geotagged photos of the storefronts in there. DC Great Streets was using these photos to make assessments about storefronts. And they were using this information to determine who is eligible for a low-cost capital improvement loans to jazz up their storefronts. Um, we, the good thing about this is that, um, the good thing about mapping on OpenStreetMap is that one need not be a geospatial professional to partake in the benefits of geospatial thinking and spatial citizenship in order to do this. So we've kind of brought this out of the realm of the, the um, technological priesthood and, and uh, given it back to the people. And um, that's, a powerful, that's a powerful thing to be able to do uh, for students. The other thing is that uh, students who do this, and actually learners of all ages, I should be saying, um, they think it's fun. It's a lot of fun to map on OpenStreetMap. It's gratifying to be able to add something on OpenStreetMap and look at it and you know, uh, point to it and be able to say, I did this, you know, and this is my stuff on the map. And that's a powerful incentive. But the other reason I think it's fun and why students gravitate to this instantly is because it respects their intellectual abilities. It's not a dumbed-down worksheet. It's not a, you know, it's not a multiple choice kind of a thing. It's actual real work, and it actually requires some engagement and requires some thinking, and that makes it a compelling, a compelling tool. We, uh, there is an organization uh, called Youth Mappers, and uh, we see this. Uh, this is another example of uh, spatial citizenship in the wild. Um, the HMS chapter, the Humanitarian Mapping Society uh, chapter at George Washington Universities is one of three uh, charter chapters for youth mappers. And youth mappers is a worldwide organization of students that uh, map in their communities, map on behalf of other communities. There are 145 chapters worldwide. If you consider that um, each chapter has 10 people. We have 1,460 active contributors to OpenStreetMap who are also spatial citizens. There's, um, how are we, okay, so how are we going to get to this, uh, this promised land of spatial citizenship? First of all, we have uh, numerous tools. Um, OpenStreetMap has uh, several um, editors, two good editors uh, for inputting data into OpenStreetMap, and they're very, very, very sophisticated, very, very good, and very, very easy to use now. So our tool set has gotten much better. We have a tasking manager that controls workflow for large distributed mapping events where we can coordinate across, across multiple events. And we have uh, quality control tools, so we can uh, do audits on the data, we can uh, see who's done what, and we have this like, change set detection that we use in order to track and audit uh, so we have an auditable data trail with it. The next thing we have is um, we have this community. And when I said up front that um, OpenStreetMap relies heavily on the community, we have a lot of geographers in our group, but we also have a lot of uh, developers, software developers, computer scientists, uh, a lot of people who are aligned with uh, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, and we also have a lot of people who are just avocationally using OpenStreetMap to, uh, say, record their, uh, you, they upload their uh, Strava bike rides and import those into OpenStreetMap, and we can have bike routes and things like that. And uh, hikers who uh, use their GPS to record their hiking trails and post those on, on OpenStreetMap. So we have this tremendous community, and um, we have been inviting educators into this community, uh, for a couple of years now, and broadening that, uh, broadening the base for which that, uh, that contribute to OpenStreetMap. We also have this, um, we've begun uh, offering uh, service learning credit here, and what you're seeing on the screen are some badges here that I have earned in the past uh, for contributing to OpenStreetMap. This is a great thing uh, because it allows us to uh, grant uh, students can put this on their resume, essentially, as accomplishments that they've, that they've uh, done in OpenStreetMap. And it's a pointer that, that offers credentials to uh, people who are just starting their careers or getting a start in life. This is a bit of credentials. 
uh, that they can use. We also grant this to teachers as well so that they can submit this for continuing education or um, professional development credit as well. So that's a, that's a, big, um, a big part of what we're offering. Um, lastly, there is, um, I don't know if you know, if you don't know about OpenStreetMap, you probably don't know about Open Historical Map or Open Railroad Map or Open Drone Map or Open Aerial Map, but there's a whole constellation of these open something maps out there. And I could see a time soon where we have a confederation of these open X maps that we can combine and we can point different learners towards those maps to add explicitly spatial uh, things to them. So for example, in open historical map, we can add uh, historical boundaries and we can add, we have a time slider that we can use to show changes uh, through time. And we can add things that um, depict um, historical processes and uh, events and things like this. I can also see somebody uh, picking up uh, James Joyce Ulysses and geotagging all of the places in Dublin on open historical map, and I would just love to see that map. So I'm really encouraged by that. Um, so how are, uh, how are we going to get there? Well, first, uh, we are improving our tool set. Um, we are adding uh, more tools uh, for teachers. We uh, are using this community. We hope to add more teachers. Um, and what kind of impact do I think we will have here? Um, I'm thinking that the impact uh, for teachers, we have, uh, I think this is the geography class that you never had. And this is, uh, we're providing remedial uh, geography instructions for, for our teachers. For OpenStreetMap, this is a great opportunity for us to gather, uh, to, to you know, recruit the next generation to maintain all of those five billion nodes or 10 billion nodes or 500 million uh, ways. And lastly, for students, um, I was thinking about this. Uh, open data is more of a process rather than a goal. And uh, for students, certainly, um, we, they get marketable skills out of this, but also they understand, begin to understand that open data is a process and that it's an ongoing process. It's not so much a goal. And uh, students that, we hope that these students will be able to fully participate in, in this spatial citizenship by having, this, uh, by having this civics notion on there. So uh, through the geographic lens, I think we have been able to communicate to students and, and deliver students a, a comprehensive, uh, a comprehensive um, curriculum that addresses the needs of geography, but also cast it in a larger, in a larger perspective. So um, it's not enough for OpenStreetMap now and large technology pro, uh, platforms like this to be able to offer this open data. It's not a goal in itself, but rather we have to consider what this data is for. And that's what I'm trying to drive to with OpenStreetMap and spatial citizenship. Thank you very much.